So hi everyone, this is Jay, your instructor for Computer Networks and the topic of the discussion today is multiplexing and the demultiplexing in the transport layer. So let's start. We will try to understand this topic with some example that suppose the device that you are seeing on the screen is your computer. Now each and every computer is having five layers. These are the TCP IP layers, which are physical layer, data link layer, network transport and the application layer. Suppose you have opened two application in the application layer, which are the Skype and the Firefox browser. Now the Skype is having server and that server is far away from you. So you can see that the Skype server is also having layers which are same as the layers of your device so skype is also having layers which are the physical layer link layer network transport and the application layer you want to open the amazon website so in the browser you will type www.amazon.com and the amazon is also having its own servers and again those servers are far away from you and it is also having these five layers you can see that these devices are having ip address in the internet it is necessary for all the devices to have unique ip address because without ip address these devices cannot talk to each other so ip address of your device is 1.2.3.4 and the IP address of the Skype server it is a 9.3.45.9 and of the Amazon server it is 23.1.3.8. Now let's consider a situation that in the Skype you want to send message to your colleague. Now when any message is sent from your device the flow of the message will be from the top layer to bottom layer. You know how TCP IP works, right? Whenever any message is sent from the device, the message will flow from the top layer to bottom layer. So message will pass from the application layer, transport layer, network, data link and the physical layer. And when any device is receiving message, for example, the message which is sent by your device will be received by the Skype server. So when Skype server is receiving your message, the flow of the data will be from the bottom layer to top layer, means from the physical layer, then link, network, transport and the application layer. Suppose you have typed some message and you have pressed the enter. So when you press the enter, the data will be passed from your computer to the Skype server. Notice in the message, the source IP is 1.2.3.4 and the destination IP is 9.3.45.9. So your computer knows that what is the IP address of the Skype server. How it knows? Using the DNS, which is called domain name system. Uh, we will going to discuss DNS when we discuss the application layer. Now, suppose you want to open the Amazon website on your browser. So you have typed the www.amazon.com. So request will be sent from your computer to the Amazon server. You can see the message of request which is sent from your computer to Amazon server is having source IP which is 1.2.3.4 and the destination IP is 23.1.3.8. So message which are sent by your computer are received successfully by both the servers. So you can see that both the servers are replying with some message. The message which is sent by the Skype server is having source IP address which is 9.3.45.9 and the destination IP is 1.2.3.4 which is the IP address of your device. And the Amazon is replying with message is having source IP which is 23.1.3.8 and the destination IP is 1.2.3.4. Now these both messages are arriving at your device at the same time. So when your computer will receive this both message, your computer will get confused 
because there are two applications which are running in the application layer because the data is received at the same time your computer will be confused that which data should be delivered to which application and right now there are only two applications which are running imagine if 10 or 12 applications are running simultaneously and they are sending and receiving data at the same time in that case your computer will be confused and it will not be able to understand that which data should be delivered to which application so that is why we need the port address and this problem is solved at the transport layer so let's see the same example but one additional thing that we will discuss before sending any data using application the port will be generated in the transport layer so you can see that the port for the skype application is 3 the port for the firefox browser is 8 the port of the skype server is 2 and the port at the amazon server is 6 so any message will be sent and received by any application with their respective port only so when skype will send any message it will pass that message using the port number 3 when the amazon, when the firefox browser will send any message it will send message using the port number 8 now let's consider the same situation that you are typing some message and you have pressed the enter so the message will be sent from your device to the skype server notice the port address is attached with the ip address so source ip you can see that 1.2.3.4 and the source port address is 3 destination ip is 9.3.45.9 and the destination port address is 2 so when the skype server will reply it knows that to which port it has to reply so it will reply and the skype application will receive the message which is sent from the skype server the message which is sent by the skype server you can see that the source ip is 9.3.45.9 the port address is 2 and destination address is 1.2.3.4 and the port address is 3 and if you are opening the amazon website in the browser the request should be sent using the port address 8 and when the message is received it is also used using the port address so you can see that using the port address we can deliver the data to the particular process to the particular application and that is why the port address is needed and it is a responsibility of the transport layer the port addresses are added at the transport layer so what is port address the port address is a 16 bit number and the combinations is 2 raised to 16 so 0 to 65 535 ports are available and the port addresses are generally assigned by your operating system and some port numbers are fixed which are known as well-known ports so you can see that all the port addresses are divided into three types 0 to 1023 are known as well-known ports so these ports are used by some popular applications such as dns or ftp or email etc these applications are having fixed number of ports so you cannot use the ports which are in range of 0 to 1023 the second type of the ports are ranging from 1024 to 49151 and after that ports which are called as dynamic ports which are 49152 to 65535 and some well known ports are authorized by IANA which is internet assigned number authority so you can see that these are the examples of some well known ports some applications is having fixed port numbers and when your computer is sending any message your computer will not use any of these ports because if it uses it will create problem okay you can see that ftp is having port number 20 then 
the SSH is having 22, then the network news transfer protocol is 119. So some popular applications are having some well-known ports. Now let's see what is socket. So socket is simply combination of the IP address and the port address. Suppose there is some IP address and port address is assigned by your operating system in the transport layer. So when these both numbers are combined together, it is known as socket. And this is it for today's session. And if you have any doubt, you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you so much.